transfer process. Oh, there we go. Uh, thanks to Chris Lambert for the opportunity for us to come and speak to you all. Uh, my name is Caroline Walls, and I'm one of the academic advisors at the Middletown campus here at Laurel Ridge. And I'm joined today, today by a couple of my colleagues, and I'd like to give them a chance to introduce themselves to you before we dive in. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining today. My name is Jocelyn Priest. I'm an academic advisor primarily located at the Middletown campus, but I also serve special populations college wide. And my name is Anna Jane Cribbs. I am an academic advisor at the Middletown campus, mostly advising students in health professions and other uh, G3 eligible programs. Thanks, Jocelyn and Anna Jane. Um, let's get down to business now. We're going to talk transfer. First, it's important for us to inform you all that preparing to transfer and eventually walking through those doors at your next college is a process. It's a three-part process, in fact. First, you must prepare. Second, you must plan. And finally, you must succeed. By the end of our presentation today, it's our goal that you'll understand the elements associated with the transfer process and feel confident that you'll be able to succeed as you undertake that process beginning during your time here with us at Laurel Ridge. Before we continue, I have just one quick note. Um, we will have time for questions at the end of our presentation today. so. Please hold any questions until then, but if you do have a burning question that you don't want to forget about, feel free to type it in the chat as we go and we'll come to it at the end. So here we are at step one, the preparation stage. Our first piece of advice for you is that you should always be wise in your preparations. Otherwise, you might set yourself up for an outcome that you are not prepared for much like eating a heavy carb-filled lunch before running a 5K. Thanks to Michael Scott for this lesson. <laughs> so to get a little more serious here, at this stage, you might be wondering, why should I bother transferring at all? Well, one of the major factors that pushes students to transfer and complete a bachelor's degree is the job market. Many employers today, particularly for professional positions, will not even offer job seekers an interview without a bachelor's degree. This is because in many cases, associate's degrees are not intended to stand alone. While we do offer applied associate degrees at Laurel Ridge, most of our students are in associates of science or associates of arts and sciences degree programs, which include elective and subject specific courses meant to transfer to a bachelor's degree program. You'll hear these degrees referred to as transfer degrees for this reason. By comparison, bachelor's degrees are intended as standalone degrees. This is because they give preparation for the professional job market through concentrated study in a particular field, offering students the opportunity to become an expert in something they are passionate about. As well, bachelor's degree programs typically offer students the chance to make additional professional connections through mentors and professors in their field. In many cases, bachelor's degree students have expanded opportunities for internships and experiential learning, giving students more hands-on experience in their field, which companies love to see on a resume after graduation. For students who wanna increase their chances for professional employment after graduation, the extra time and effort required to attain a bachelor's degree is almost always worth it. In short, associate's degrees do not always stand alone, but bachelor's degrees do. Okay. It may come as no surprise to you that as a result of the job market requiring bachelor's degrees for more and more positions, studies have shown that those with bachelor's degrees and beyond are making more and more money when compared with their less educated counterparts. In short, overall, lifetime earnings tend to increase as the level of education increases. The more degrees you earn, the greater your earning potential is in the marketplace. You can see this logic represented in the graphs on this slide, which are sourced from a 2021 Georgetown study, which even as a UVA alum, I must admit is a very reputable school. These graphs show that lifetime earnings on average increase with level of education. There are some variations and exceptions to this within each educational level that may be explained by differences in fields of study and the occupations that exist within each field, as well as cost of living factors and, unfortunately, even today, gender, race, and ethnicity. 
So how can you personally know if earning a bachelor's degree will actually be a benefit to you on the dollar bill side of things? The answer is research. Yeah, you'll have to look up some facts, figures, and educational requirements concerning your desired occupation. Think along the lines of a dream job or career here because the prepare stage is all about looking at the big picture ideas. Then align your academic plan to the path that will set you up for the most success. And don't forget that success also means having opportunities for advancement within the job or career field that you choose to pursue. If your research on a dream job or career suggests a bachelor's degree or higher for the most opportunity for success and advancement, then you have yourself an answer. You've got to go grab those degrees. Throughout this presentation, we will continue to refer to transferring as a process for a reason, because that's exactly what it is. Like our penguin friend here, what we're trying to accomplish takes several steps and sometimes might feel a bit messy and overwhelming, but in the end, we know you can be successful. Let's consider the dictionary definition of process on the slide, a series of actions that produce something or that lead to a particular result. This sounds a lot like what we're asking you to do as you begin your transfer journey. That is, we're asking you to make a list of actions that will produce your ultimate goal or preferred results. A bachelor's degree from the school of your choice. In our case, the series of actions are in order, establish your timeline, decide on your path, research your options, and make the deadline. The end result is that you produce a competitive application for admission into a bachelor's degree program and attain acceptance. This will eventually lead to your ultimate result, a bachelor's degree with your name on it. Now I'll turn it over to my colleague who will start to walk us through the next steps of this important process. Thanks, Caroline. So the first step in the transfer action steps, as Caroline just outlined, is establishing that timeline. Um, included in, the, in these timelines are your important deadlines and due dates. Um, important things to consider when looking at these important dates um, and when you want to transfer is which semester you want to start classes. Do you want to start taking classes at your desired transfer institution in the fall or in the spring? Um, you may choose to transfer after completing your entire associate's degree, or you, more, you may be more interested in transferring after you only take a few classes in a semester or two. Now, if you fall into the category of students wanting to just take some classes, not finishing the associate's degree, um, passport courses may be something that you want to look into. Um, these are universally transferable that satisfy the lower division general education requirements. Um, you want to discuss this with your advisor so that you can know which passport courses would be most beneficial for you, or you can pursue the uniform certificate of general studies, which basically just focuses on satisfying those general education education requirements. So we're going to work backwards a little bit. So if you know when you want to transfer and or where you want to transfer and what and when you want to start taking classes, it's important to note that the best time to start researching your transfer schools is a year prior to when you're hoping to transfer. So for those of you who do have plans to transfer for fall of 2023, I hope you already started that research process and you're getting ready to submit your applications. Um, but for those of you who do want to transfer after fall of 2023, now is a good time to get started on that process. Um, you'll want to make sure that you're making notes of the application dates and deadlines for some of your most top or interesting schools. Now, all schools are different, um, but most institutions do have an application deadline for fall around March 1st and then for spring around October 1st. So that deadline is coming up pretty quick for our fall transfer students. And now it's also important to know that some schools do have what's called rolling admissions. So they may have deadlines beyond the March 1st and October 1st deadlines. But even so, for those schools, even your final semester at Lower Ridge is just a little bit too late to start doing that transfer research process. So you can never get started too early. Okay, so I'm sure you've gathered um, research is pretty important throughout the entire tra the transfer research process. Um, we are not talking about the extent of research that you need to do in a class, but we're looking at, you know, the, enough Googling to make sure that you're getting the information that you're looking for. Um, you want to uncover your options, resources available, different perspectives, as well as guidelines for each of your desired schools. 
So researching to uncover those options. A great tool that I want to just go over here quickly, it's called Transfer Virginia. Um, this is a site that's available to all um, community college students, Laurel Ridge students. And um, this website is little disclaimer, it's still a work in progress, so it may not have all of the information that you're looking for, but it is a good starting point. So if we look at our transfer partners page and Anna Jane, you can just pick whichever school is first. Um, it will outline some important things to know about the transfer school, like when their application deadline is um, important information about financial aid, what majors they have, things like that. Now, most of these do link directly to that school's website for that information. And like I said, everything's not going to be listed here, but it's definitely a good starting place. So if you don't even know where to begin to start um, your transfer research, Transfer Virginia might be a good option. Now, a resource that is available within our website, it's our transfer visits and events page. And this is a page I encourage you to visit frequently as you're doing your transfer research because it lists a bunch of different schools throughout the state. And then um, through under each of these schools, a list of transfer representatives, contact information, when they're gonna be on campus, if they're gonna be on campus, if they offer appointments, um, things like that. So really good to look at that so you know who you need to reach out to um, for whatever school you may be interested in. Now, specifically related to transfer representatives, I do encourage students to consider making one-on-one -on -one appointments with the transfer representative of your target transfer school before you submit any applications, um, because they will walk you through that entire process, as well as any requirements that their school has. Um, they'll be able to answer any specific questions that you have, and then help you get more information about what academic life really is at their institution. Um, there are really additional resources for uncovering that perspective that I was mentioning earlier. And of course, beyond the transfer representatives, you should also consult with your professors or professionals in the field that you're interested in. And then of course, your academic advisor um, for additional perspective when you're making those decisions. Now, I want to share a few highlights concerning GAA guidelines. So the first thing to remember is that GAA stands for Guaranteed Admission Agreement. And this is agreement um, that refers to a binding document or contract between Laurel Ridge and each individual transfer institute. And now the GAA then guarantees admission or acceptance to those Laurel Ridge students who meet the criteria set forth by the transfer school. Now, because the details of each agreement are finalized by each individual transfer school, not all agreements are going to be exactly the same. Now, typically, they will each carry a minimum GPA requirement and a minimum number of completed credits. Um, some agreements might also require specific courses to be completed or have a maximum number of course retakes that they are allowed um, or have a required letter of intent that you need to submit with your general application. Now, all of those details just say that they can vary significantly. Um, so that's why it's very important that you're reaching out to transfer representatives early, you're doing this research early, so that you're aware of what those guidelines are before you have to submit your application. Now, to wrap up this section here, I just want to give you two final thoughts. Just because a student meets the guaranteed admission requirements, this does not mean that you are guaranteed acceptance into your desired major at that school. Some majors do have additional requirements that must be met outside of the guaranteed admission agreement. So again, this is another detail that's best discussed with the transfer representative and why it's so important that you reach out and get this information. Now, number two, the guaranteed admission is not the only way to transfer. Um, students are accepted competitively all the time. So just because you don't meet, meet the GAA requirements, that does not mean that you will be accepted to the school through the regular admissions process. All right, so I'm going to hand it over to Anna Jane now, who's going to go through the next steps in the transfer process. All right, thank you, Jocelyn. So now that you've done all of your research, it's time to turn all of that information into action items. Um, as Mr. Wonka here is asking, uh, what's your plan now that you have all this, this great information that you've gathered? So we're going to start off with with academic planning. Um, we are uh, 
you know, talking about going to college. So let's uh, talk about the academic side of things first. It is important uh, to plan out the remaining courses you have left to complete your degree at Laurel Ridge uh, and make sure you are set up to graduate in your desired semester. Um, make sure the remaining classes you need to take will be offered in upcoming semesters. Um, ensure you've completed any prerequisites for any courses that you need. Um, you know, kind of plan out what's a realistic course load for you. And, and so that lines up with the semester that you want to complete. Um, you also want to choose any of your remaining uh, elective courses based on your target transfer school uh, or program. So you want to use those elective courses to fulfill pre-major requirements uh, for your desired school or program. Uh, while it may be really fun to use uh, your elective credits on yoga and hiking and and you can, um, you know, take a couple of those classes, it may not be the most beneficial option in the long run if you're looking to get a psychology degree, for example. Your academic advisor and transfer representatives can help you in planning out your final semesters. Some universities even offer documents called roadmaps or transfer guides that are extremely helpful in pointing out classes that are most beneficial for students to complete prior to transferring to their school. Um, and we're gonna take a look at an example of one of these roadmap documents from uh, Virginia Tech for their animal, poultry, animal and poultry sciences major, whoops. Okay, so this document um, outlines the courses that are required at Virginia Tech, as well as the VCCS or Laurel Ridge courses um, that they like to see on students' transcripts uh, for admission. Um, and they also even break it down a step further and tell you which classes you have to have to start in this major, which classes they really recommend you have, and which classes that would be great if you had, but it's not absolutely necessary. Um, so a lot of, uh, especially in-state um, big universities have documents like these. Uh, so definitely as you're meeting with transfer representatives and your academic advisor, if you know what school specifically you're interested in going to um, and you're getting ready to plan those final electives, uh, ask and see if you, there's a document like this to help in your academic planning. Okay, you also wanna be efficient. So you wanna complete as many pre-major requirements as possible prior to transferring, but you don't wanna to take too many extra credits that don't also align with your degree requirements for Laurel Ridge. So you wanna keep in mind, transfer schools will only usually take a certain number of credits to be put towards your bachelor degree. So unless you need to take an extra class, um, like it's a required class listed on that Virginia Tech uh, sheet, um, it's not typically recommended to take extra classes outside of what you need for your associate's degree at Laurel Ridge. And competitive applications are the name of the game. Um, Ds do get degrees uh, at Laurel Ridge, um, but those specific courses that you got a D in will not transfer credit into your uh, co next college or university. Um, so especially if a class is a pre-major requirement, meaning it's gonna be really essential, for your major um, at your next college or university, you wanna make sure you have a C or higher. Um, and class retakes are always an option and that's something that you can discuss with your academic advisor. All right, now we're gonna uh, talk a little bit more about the personal side of planning to transfer. So deciding what you wanna do after leaving Laurel Ridge is a big decision. You wanna talk it over with your support system, friends, family, your pets, whoever knows you best. They may help provide valuable insight into factors you have not considered. Um, take everything into account, so get everybody's feedback, but do keep in mind that it is ultimately your decision. Some of the non-academic things you should keep in mind when you're trying to select your perfect transfer school are the location. Um, how far is it from home? How far do you want it to be from home? Do you want to be you know, a couple hours away or do you wanna be close? Um, are you looking to keep your current job? If so, it may be important for you to stay pretty close to it. Class delivery options. Do they offer classes in person, online, hybrid? What is your preferred format? What do you, how do you learn best in making sure that school offers what's gonna um, work best for you? Is it rural or a city um, atmosphere? And what are you most comfortable in? Transportation options. So, you know, are you gonna take a car to school with you? Are you going to, is there public transportation available? Are you gonna live close enough to campus to be able to walk? 
housing. Um, are you prepared for a roommate or are you financially prepared to afford housing without a roommate if you don't want a roommate? Um, are, would you want to live on or off campus? If you're wanting to live on campus, you may want to look into if that's an option or guaranteed for transfer students because sometimes um, schools don't guarantee on-campus housing for transfer students. So you want to make sure that you will be able to get on-campus housing. Extracurricular activities. Um, are there certain clubs or sports that you want to see uh, either offered through the school or in close proximity to the school. Um, I met with a student uh, probably about a year and a half, two years ago, who really wanted to uh, make sure there was a fencing club at the school that they transferred to, because that was an important um, extracurricular activity they wanted to be able to continue to do. So that was part of his research to make sure that there was a, a fencing club. All right, go fund me, but seriously, how are you gonna pay for it? Um, so there's always the FAFSA. Um, you do wanna pay attention to your transfer school's priority deadline um, because a lot of transfer schools, um, if, especially if they're bigger schools, will have a pretty strict priority deadline um, to make, and that just makes sure you're able to maximize all the funds you're eligible for. You also wanna be aware that um, while Laurel Ridge does not automatically award student loans um, in your financial aid package, students have to fill out an additional application for that. Other schools may, so be sure when you're looking at your financial aid package that you're reviewing it carefully before accepting so you fully understand what money you're being awarded, what is grants that you don't have to pay back, what scholarships you also don't have to pay back, and then loans, um, which you do have to pay back eventually. See if your school has transfer-specific scholarships. A lot of schools have um, scholarships for merit, meaning you had a certain GPA. Um, they also have need-based and additional uh, different scholarships. Uh, plan ahead because some schools do have earlier application deadlines to be considered for scholarships. So that's part of that research and making sure you're meeting those application deadlines. Um, are you planning to work while you're in uh, school, explore work study opportunities or part-time jobs? And just keep in mind that tuition and books are just part of the costs. Um, you also need to consider adulting costs if you're planning to go away from home and do not intend to live on campus. Um, be attentive when you're reviewing rental contracts. What does that, what does the rent include? Does that include utilities, internet? Etc. Um, you know, the rent may look really cheap, but if you have to pay internet and water and electric out of pocket, the rent could be much higher. Uh, how are you getting to and from school? Again, going back to, um, do you have a car? Um, are you taking the car? Does your school charge for parking? Many do. Um, so is there public transportation? Is that going to be a more, you know, financially um, smart decision to make? Uh, or will you be living close enough to walk? Uh, food, are you going to get a meal plan through your transfer school? Or are you gonna grocery shop and prepare food yourself? And then also just any other living expenses. You gotta have spending money um, for social activities. Uh, a lot of you know transfer colleges and universities have sporting events. Is that gonna be something you're looking to attend? Usually uh, students still have to pay for tickets. Um, to sporting events. So uh, that's some additional costs that you may want to keep in mind. All right, lastly, we're going to talk about the kind of the final step, the application plan. Um, so most applications cannot be completed overnight. Uh, some require essays, additional documents to be sent, like your transcript um, from Laurel Ridge. <laughs> um, so you want to make sure you're beginning these applications early so you can re request these um, additional documents so they everything makes it by the deadline. Um, to request an official transcript, um, you that is done through a system called Parchment now. Um, so laurelridge.edu slash request dash a dash transcript, um, and the link is on this slide as well, um, will give you the instructions on how to request your official transcript. If your school just needs an unofficial transcript, uh, you can uh, actually pull that up yourself in SIS and you can um, ask your academic advisor if you're unsure on how to do that. Again, just plan ahead, plan to submit your application before the deadline. Um, keep in mind, many schools require all that documentation to be received by the deadline. This means transcripts too. 
some schools give you a little leeway, meaning their applications due March 1st and your transcripts and all your other stuff might be due March 15th, but don't assume that. Um, that's part of your research to make sure that you're, you're meeting all those deadlines. And again, the transcripts have to be sent by the records office, so that's not always immediately. So um, you make sure, sure you give yourself plenty of time to do that. Also, uh, your transfer representative is your best friend. They are the experts on their school in the admissions process. So be prepared for appointments with them to maximize your time. It's usually beneficial to have a copy of your unofficial transcript at any meeting with a transfer rep so that they can um, you know, look at your classes and make suggestions on what, will, what you might still need to take to make you a stronger applicant. And I am going to hand it over to Jocelyn now, who is going to uh, get us through the rest of the application process. All right, so um, you've done your research, you've created your plan, and now we're gonna move on to those final most exciting steps, finally submitting the application and graduating. Okay, so as a reminder, um, transferring is a process, not a single event. Um, the transfer process does take time and research and is typically not completed in one day. Um, remember to check in with yourself throughout this entire process from the time that you start at Laurel Ridge to when you will be transferring. Um, you want to assess your strengths and weaknesses and just ensure that you're going down a path that you're actually interested in and passionate about. Um, it's okay if you change your mind. You don't want to um, have to stick with the decision that you made at the beginning of the process. Um, if you if you are more interested in something else, that's okay. You may find that after taking a few classes on a specific major that it's definitely not what you thought it was. Um, so just make sure that you talk to your academic advisor if you want to change your major or change your classes or anything like that. And ideally, obviously, before you transfer and they can help you work through those changes. Now, you also want to make sure that you keep your research notes really organized and in a place where you won't lose them. Um, you'll want to continuously check these things as you're preparing that application and gathering your documentation. It's certainly a lot of information to keep track of, especially if you're applying to more than one school. So the more organized your notes, the better and the easier they are to reference. Now, when you're making a decision on which schools you're most interested in applying to, um, a good rule of thumb would be to submit to one to three schools, but you know you can certainly to submit to however many you like. And then um, remember to keep checking in with your academic advisor throughout your entire time at Laurel Ridge, just so they can help you align your degree coursework to that of your transfer institution, so that once you transfer, you're ready to go into your major. All right, so this slide just has some reminders, things that we've pretty much covered already throughout the presentation. Um, you do want to tailor your admissions application to the specific school or program you are applying to. Um, for any personal statements that may be required, this is a time to highlight your skills and abilities. You really wanna set yourself apart from the rest. Um, as Anna Jane mentioned, remember to submit your application before that final deadline. You should also keep in mind that application deadlines for most institutions also require all that supporting documentation. So again, requesting your transcript, um, you can do that through lauraridge.edu slash request a transcript or simply by searching transcript on our homepage. And again, request these ahead of time because they're not processed immediately. All right, Caroline is going to finish this up. So by this point in the process, you've almost made it to graduation. Congrats in advance on your awesome achievement. Um, when you are approaching your last semester here with us at Laurel Ridge, it's time to apply for graduation. You can complete the graduation application in your student center located in your SIS account. Um, the link provided on this slide also gives you more detailed instructions if you want to go to it that way. Um, something fun and important to note is that if you apply for graduation before enrollment opens for the next semester, you can enroll before the general population of students. This gives you more class options and better class selection, which makes it easier to schedule your classes around existing obligations. So as we mentioned before, if you plan on transferring before graduating from Laurel Ridge, that's okay too. But it's important to know when you want to transfer to ensure you're meeting all the requirements for competitive admission at that next school.
So we know this was a lot of information and the transfer process can feel overwhelming at the start, but please know that your Laurel Ridge advisor and the transfer reps that we connect you with are here to help you along the way. And we're so glad to answer any questions that you may have, or if you do have a question we can't answer, we will help you find the person who does know the answer. That's our pledge to you. At this time, we'd like to open the floor for any questions you may have right now regarding this presentation or the transfer process as a whole. All right, there's a couple in chat, so I'll start with those. Um, so Jonathan asked, what are professional degrees? I think those are those postgraduate um, programs. So we're talking uh, doctorates or um, graduate level certificates, things like that. Um, and then Jonathan, you also asked if George Mason will become a GAA school by 2024. Um, George Mason already has a guaranteed admission agreement with us. Um, the Transfer Virginia website is just about integrating um, their kind of their information into that portal. Um, so I think that's what's still in process, um, but they do have a guaranteed admission agreement with us. And now we welcome any other questions to drop them in chat, or you can go ahead and unmute yourselves if, if you'd like to speak up. Yeah, I had a question. Um, yeah, of course. Sorry, sorry about that. Um, uh, I was wondering, is applying competitively a different process than the G GAA process? Because uh, when I was applying like as a transfer to tech, I didn't know if there was a like a transfer application and a GAA, or does it just require like a GAA letter as, as well on top of that, if that makes sense? So you do usually have to apply via the transfer application. Um, there may be like um, a piece on the application that you indicate you're applying via the GAA. Um, if you are applying to Tech, Tech has amazing transfer research or resources and um, representatives. Um, they actually let you schedule one-on-one -on -one appointments with their transfer representatives. So if you haven't been connected with um, one of the transfer representatives there yet, I would definitely encourage you to uh, to reach out to them um, and there, if you go to their website and admissions and then transfer, um, all that information will pull up, um, but they would definitely be a great resource to connect with. Um, I do believe you're going to have to do an application and I think there's just a piece of the application where you indicate that there's there a GA that you're applying through the GAA or not. Um, but the transfer representatives are awesome at tech so utilize them. <laughs> And for other students, if you have that question too, there are some schools that require what's called a letter of intent, um, like JMU is a school that requires that. So that is a supplemental um, document, supplemental piece of documentation that you'll submit with your application to indicate that you're applying as a guaranteed admission student. Okay, thank you. I have a question. Go ahead. So um, how do you apply to dorm in uh, JMU and is it only after you get accepted do you apply? That's a good question. I think that um, you do, I would assume that you have to be accepted first. I'm not sure. Anna Jane, if you know, if you want to chime in. Um, but Kate McDaniel is the transfer representative for JMU, and she offers one on one appointments, and she's also very responsive to email. Um, so if you want me to send you her contact information, I can certainly do that, and you can reach out to her directly because um, I don't know exactly what that process is. If you have to wait until you're accepted, or if you can get started on that process earlier. Thank you. And that was, is it Kira? Yes, ma'am. Okay, yep, yeah, I'll send you um, the information, okay? Okay, thank you. Uh, I have a question. Go ahead. Okay, so, uh, well, first off, this is at just, this is actually my last semester here, actually. Okay. So basically just kind of start this process now. It, I mean, we it's still okay to start. Um, you know, I, mean, I have I have ideas of where to go to school. Just you know, talk to the transfer representative first. 
Yeah. So do, um, do you, if you have a school you're interested in, a good place to start would probably be that uh, Laurel Ridge. I do Ridge. have two ideas. Yeah. So the a good place to start might be the Laurel Ridge Transfer Visits and Events page, because um, then you could go by or go to those schools you're interested in and um, then you know, drop down and see if there's a transfer contact information there. Um, you can also go to those school specific websites um, and and look up and research transfer information there. Um, you can also schedule an appointment with your Laurel Ridge academic advisor who might be able to help you get started with that research step um, in helping you navigate some of those for your school's websites and things. Okay. And Jocelyn, did you see um, Michaela would also like uh, Kate's contact information from JMU? Yeah, I just sent it to her. Thank you. Okay, awesome. I had another quick question, if you didn't, if you don't mind. Of course. Um, so when you said uh, to apply for graduation early uh, to get priority for, is that like uh, summer and uh, and fall classes, like? Is that just like a priority as in like a slot in the class or? So um, if you apply to graduation before enrollment opens for your final semester, so let's say you have some classes to finish up this summer um, to graduate. If you apply to graduate before enrollment opens for the summer, uh, then you'll get to enroll with um, our special population. So special populations usually get to enroll earlier than the general population of students. Um, so I think um, at, if you apply to graduate um, for summer uh, here in the next, or fall actually, because we enroll for summer and fall at the same time, um, in the next couple weeks, you'll probably get to enroll um, somewhere around the first week of March for the summer and the fall, because you enroll for summer and fall at the same time. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. And I just wanted to know as well if we if we can like access this PowerPoint or like uh, if it, is it online or something. Um, I believe we do have a spot for the slides, um, and I think it is on there already because um, it was on there from the last time we did this presentation. Um, but I know the recording gets posted. Let me look real quick. I'm pretty sure there's. Okay, yeah, he had the recording is on the transfer visits and events page. Um, I can definitely see if we can get the PowerPoint posted. Oh, yeah, Chris says we'll post the recording. Um, I'm trying to think if we could post the slides themselves. Okay, that's, yep, that's, Chris says he can post the PowerPoint too. So yeah, they'll both be perfect. on the transfer visits and events page. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> I have a question. Go ahead. Okay. I'm I'm not the actual child at the school right now. I'm a parent. Okay. It's the class, so that's why I'm substituting. But my question is, she needs to take um, one class during summertime, if that's possible. Mm -hmm. She's transferring in in fall, and she already has her acceptance and everything. And um, what I'm trying to figure out is, is there a way to determine if the class she wants to take is available in summer ahead of time? Do you know what class it is? Yeah, she's in Spanish 101, and she needs to take the second semester before oh. she, because uh, we don't really want when we get to the upper, the other school, the university, we don't want her to have to complete a different language class curriculum. Okay. We'd like to finish the one she's currently in. Absolutely. So yes, our summer schedule will be viewable at the end of this month. Um, so she'll be able to log in and search for classes that we're offering for both summer and fall at the uh, February 22nd, I want to say. It's around that time. Um, so if it's not offered, and then have her reach out to her academic advisor, and then we can explore other options. 
Well, because we, like, I had already gone to the office once with her, and they uh -huh. discussed her possibly attending online while she's in her other college, that sure. one class, because she's not going that far. She's going to be in Front Royal. Yep, that's definitely an option. Yeah, but she'll be able to see it at the end of this month if it's going to be offered or not. Okay, so she'll mm -hmm. know then. Yes. All right. Yep. And if she I applies mean, for graduation, she'll have priority enrollment too. So in, if she hasn't applied for graduation already, I would encourage her to do that. Um, why do they specifically have her apply for graduation when she's only been taking classes for one year? Um, so we have all of our students apply to graduate. Uh, yeah. if, oh, is she, is she graduating within a, within a degree or is she transferring early? No, she's not graduating with degree. She's oh, okay. Early. Okay, then so, never mind. <laughs> but she doesn't do that, right? She okay. just yeah. No, she'll the credit hours that she accrued. She submits the transcript, and the other party decides whether or not they're going to give her the credits or not, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, okay. then she'll just be able to enroll with with current students. But yes, uh, she'll be able, still be able to see the schedule on February twenty second. Okay, and they still won't deprioritize her for being able to get the one class if they offer it right they'll let her register and take it right um at, when her enrollment period opens uh, at yeah. the end of march yes okay all yep. right thank you all right well, we will stay on um, for another, you know, 10 minutes or so if people have additional questions. But um, thank you all for coming and we hope you found this informative.